yeah this is a sad one isn't it so this video came out right maybe a few a couple of days ago and i saw it on twitter first and i tried to look for it again and it got deleted and i had to go to someone's instagram profile to go get it but i finally found it but essentially someone made a video um clipping together these video clips of prominent people in electronic music carl cox seth Truxler, some other randoms um essentially pleading to the fans this might have been during uh the whole bank and promo days right it might have been during i'm not too sure but essentially pleading with the fans to buy um music or to buy some mixes and that those proceeds that they would uh, spend would go towards uh helping out the tour manager of said artist whether it was a singular tour manager that handled every single artist or it was a you know in tour manager for each one it still just seemed like a it seemed like a parody it seemed like a joke it seemed like something that would be like a, a tiktok video or something like a you know like a wind up but it was real and it's disappointing especially for the fact that it involves someone like a seth i think carl cox you know i've never been a fan of carl cox i've always thought he's a bit of a wally he just reminds me of those kind of coconut black dudes that we have in the uk um you know that speak a certain way that don't know anything about black culture that hang out with you know people that might have national front or bmp tattoos on their calves and shit um he made some ridiculous comments back in the day when the whole london riots were happening on the ra podcast i think they asked him about it and he had no idea what was going on right he, he's so dis he's so like detached from reality so detached from the everyday world that he had no idea there was any riots in the uk he sort of made this kind of half a half hide attempt to kind of have an opinion and then he kind of got to it and he was like oh yeah it's because they listened to all that r&b and stuff it's like r&b he didn't have enough he didn't even have the the mental capacity to stretch towards hip hop or grime or something. He said R and B, like UK people, UK kids are listening to too much fucking Black Street and that's what's leading them to going to, you know, looting shopping centres after uh, a young man gets shot by the police. It's like, okay dude. So since then he's been, you know, he's been done with me to be honest. And again, you know, it's it's only one DJ. You don't need to hear that sort of music. I don't wanna hear this big black dude with his arms stretched out behind the decks like, you know, that's that famous kind of EDM step thing, like, you know, giving himself a fucking uh blow job on the stage. I don't need it, so I wasn't a fan ever of his anyway so to see him doing that it's all well and good in it because he he occupies that sort of like mixed mag kind of like um edm crew uh sphere you know sort of big lights and you know kooky hats and shit and all that sort of you know smoking all that nonsense so let him do what he's doing there but see someone like a seth trucks again involved that's a that's the disappointing thing i guess we shouldn't be surprised because seth anyone that's a bit social justice social justice right and preachy online and kind of haranguing people and telling people what to do and what they're doing wrong usually by and large has a lot of skeletons in their closet right and usually when they get called out for things that they're doing that isn't you know quite kosher they they're not self-aware they're not able to kind of you know acknowledge okay cool you guys are right man i, I fucked up i put my hands up i apologize i'll do right next time they're usually unable to see that because you know if you can't if, you, if you're able to kind of be so uh, if you're able to be so quick to judge others it's very unlikely that you're then going to be able to listen or to be able to even comprehend the fact that you could do anything wrong because in your eyes you know why can't they just be more like me you know what i mean it's that kind of weird um narcissistic kind of pov but let's see the video actually of what actually happened right so this is the actual roundup of it this guy called is it john ask you i'll give him a little bit of a shout out I think he made the video and it's a really good kind of roundup of the whole situation. Let me pause it. Get get there so I'll get up on the screen. Doom. Yeah, so this is And then Martinez brothers too, man. I love those guys as well. Why are they getting involved in this nonsense, man? Come on. Ugh. Okay, let's go back on that. Everybody, as we're all trying to stay alive and stay sane here, there is one thing that really drove a lot of the background of what you guys love and did so much raving and supported us so deeply in keeping us alive and keeping us sane and keeping us on the road with the tour managers. Right now, our tour managers need your love and support. For an update on the band camp where you can donate and download 10 exclusive podcast mixes. Buy the tour managers. Help them support them. Please. Donate, and we all love you. 
Let me get this straight. The richest DJs on the planet are asking. Support us so deeply. A lot of them are out of work. Who are all skint at the straight. The richest DJs on the planet are asking the general public who are all skint at the moment. A lot of them are out of work. A lot of them have lost their jobs. A lot of them are on reduced rates of income. The richest DJs in the world are asking the general public to buy music to support their tour managers. Why? Why aren't they covering their tour managers' costs and giving away these mixes for free? Or charging money and giving that money to the medical services, the NHS and every other country's equivalent? These are guys with multiple millions of pounds, euros, dollars in the bank, and they're asking the general public to keep their tour managers afloat? Why don't you fucking pay for them? Why have the public got to pay for them? You've got millions. You fucking pay for them. We're begging you, support our tour managers. Support the guys that fly all the way around the world 50 times a month in economy class while I'm sipping champagne up the front, not giving a fuck and posting some utter horseshit about the struggle of humanity. Please give these guys some of your money that you don't have. If you don't, we're going to have to use our own money. Please don't make me pay them. And it's funny, I'll stop it there, but the interesting part about it is that of course, you know, it's a ludicrous suggestion to even suggest that fans should be somehow uh, supplementing the income or supporting the tour managers of these artists. Let, fair enough if it was an up and coming artist on the label, right? Um, Dixon did a really cool live stream with Boiler Room a few weeks or a couple of weeks back, maybe a few weeks back actually, where he essentially did a mix and played loads of exclusive tunes that were then going to be sold on an EP. So it was a good way to kind of, you know, in order to kind of to flex his muscles as a DJ and also to kind of give people on EP who are lesser known a bit of shine and then you go and buy the the, the tape right after the stream is ended right so that's a bigger artist using his platform in order to kind of chuck some coins uh towards the direction of people who are coming up in the scene and haven't necessarily got the income or have or been hit the hardest during this whole coronavirus lockdown thing so a clever way and doesn't really involve you having to beg and plead with your fans in order to buy albums for you to support because you know the natural thing someone would have said to Dixon was like you're a millionaire too why should we do that but he did it in a clever way but I don't understand why they thought this is a good idea. Number one, how how are they how are they um able to sell a mix with other people's music on Bandcamp? It doesn't make any sense that way. If they're able to do that, then that's you know legitimately pretty unethical anyway, right? If you are uh, talking about you know uh, artists royalties and people being paid for their work and shit, it just doesn't make any sense how you can just make a mix and sell it on Bandcamp. But whatever, if you can do that, fair enough. But still, the way it's done. The way they kind of haranguing and essentially pleading with the public to support them is just insane because you could ask these artists why aren't you supporting your own tour manager and again it's your tour manager it's not even something that's the main part of your team it's an extension some people have m managers that just do everything right they do the a and r ring they fucking book stuff they are the what you call it they yeah they they book everything for you they're your best friend they're your psychiatrist and you have a separate person not your manager day to day not your booking agent a tour manager that you need to support it's just insane it boggles the mind and again it makes me understand now why some people are so uh against the whole ra rhetoric of like let's save the scene and if you notice Re resin advisor hasn't posted about it mix mag didn't post about it dj mag didn't post about it those big publications that essentially prop up these djs and make them seem as if they're like you know uh they walk on water whatever it may be or the ones that are kind of calling out certain artists for some things that they do wrong they don't want to touch the story at all why because i guess there are some artists on a kind of lower level who are also doing the same thing right this idea that we should the fans should be supporting these artists and kind of uh providing them with a stipend or something and usually it's not even a it's not a bad thing to ask for money from your fans do what you want to do but usually the artists that are bigger and pleading the most are the ones that aren't even providing the fans any kind of uh what would you say they're not providing them with any reason why they should right when you're on patreon you have tiers of backing support and actual stuff that you want to give your fans based on the tiers based on how much they donate right you might say there's exclusive mix you get a week you might get a live q a i might write you a blog i might upload some archive pictures whatever right there's something that you're going to get from a t-shirt some poster whatever they don't do any of that shit they just want you to support their life support their lifestyle because i'm a dj as if that occupation is 
you know as if anyone gives a shit now right people are going through whatever they're going through in life and you actually legitimately and there's like a t like this is the best time as well to actually see who's about it and who actually is loving the scene who wants to do who actually is about the culture because the people that are are just filming in their bedroom not asking anyone for nothing playing records because that's what they would do if they were getting paid 50 euros or 5,000 euros but the ones that are doing this sort of shit have essentially found out that it's a it's a hustle in it like they've been able to coast by because again most of those big dudes don't go record shopping right they're not really part of the scene they just stay in hotels they don't go to parties they don't dance and shit they don't really you know again they don't participate in culture anymore because they're too big i guess in some respects they get sent loads of demos by some of the biggest up and coming artists in the world producers who are trying to get themselves on which essentially kind of uh, uh that entry level of sending something to an artist means that you're going because usually if you're somebody that's about it and really wants to make a career for yourself you're not going to just spam a record label with shit that you made you know yesterday you're going to be able you're going to have an actual background in making music and you're going to send them the best stuff you've, you've got so they're getting the best music sent that record to their inboxes right from labels from up-and-coming producers and they're just picking that stuff and playing it or worse yet they're going on beat pool and just playing the top 100 tunes of that particular month or that particular week so they're not making any effort whatsoever so they've realized it's just a hustle it's just like a it's a it's a big hustle it's a big game right they get paid millions of dollars to go or thousands of dollars to go play the festival which are all well and deserving to do but then to do that because we know they we all know that most of them are essentially stealing a living but we're okay with it because we have other people that we can kind of distract ourselves with and you know everyone can do what they want to do but then to turn around when you're stealing a living and ask us fans to support your tour manager is insane legitimately insane and again you haven't heard a pip a peep squeak from seth i think from now i think he's made some comment he made like a statement in a comment thread or someone commented or something but he hasn't said anything publicly he hasn't recorded another video he hasn't made a massive stink up on social about it you know when he was kind of ripping on those tech house people on social media like some of these ugh, it's again because i'm a big fan of seth doctors i've said it from the beginning like i've i loved him but this dude man he just he makes it so hard to be a fan of his isn't it? and now it makes all his kind of haranguing of lena kravitz because she wanted to you know lean into her sex appeal during her kind of ra uh, scenes video it makes that whole stink that he raised upon that really dumb as well in it like who are you to begrudge a woman for trying to lean into something that people are finding compelling it is what it is isn't it like issue and 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 now the 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 kind of record books have shown that nina kravis is still one of the biggest and best eaters we have in a scene regardless of what's hanging between her legs but she just happens to be attractive why wouldn't you lean into it and he was one of the people that was kind of you know pointing fingers and saying that you know what's the scene devolved into and all this sort of shit and now look at what you're doing asking fans to support the lifestyle or asking fans to support your tour manager it's like why don't you do it yourself mate like why are we even having to hear about this why aren't they just doing this behind the closed doors it just doesn't make any sense in it but then i think there's a little update regarding the actual issue here on via a blog post i think i found this is from the the dancing astronaut right so i think they kind of made an update regarding the whole issue and i think he must have said something i'm sure he did right um where is it ba -ba 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 -ba. this is from dancing astronaut let me see if i can get the link up here from john askew so this is the post that he made on social about it this is an utter scandal out of desperation of for income in these trying times tour managers of some of the world's richest djs launched a mixed series to try and raise donations for the public to keep themselves afloat while out of work and then the millionaires they work for have the audacity to beg and plead to the general public to get involved okay cool so i didn't know that so that first bit is okay right i think in my opinion again it's a bit slimy and if anything it makes the artists look horrible the tour managers if they're in a if they're in a sticky position and they want to make some money and they have some pictures of these guys and they find it they get the permission of them to kind of sell them on to make some money fair but it still makes them look bad right if they're having to sell fucking decks and shit and all that stuff it makes the actual dj that they work with look horrible because you shouldn't be putting them in that position but when the djs get involved and beg the fans to support these guys and buy that stuff that's when it gets out of line that's when it's just absolutely ridiculous that doesn't make any sense let's continue here so it says so these questions are not covering the basic cost of their loyal warriors that babysit them 24 seconds because that job is not easy being a tour manager of a internationally recognized dj especially somebody that's 
that that much lacking in self-awareness that they would film a selfie video of themselves haranguing and begging and coercing and pleading with fans to fucking you know support the lifestyle of a person they don't know it's just insane right? obviously you don't know the dj but at least you have some sort of affection to them right you buy their tunes you support them at shows you buy their merch but a tour manager can you even name one do you even know what tour manager even looks like i don't know like what do they have lanyards and shit i don't know do they wear those will those weird um fucking berets i don't know what tom what a fucking intro music tour manager looks like are they one of the hundreds of you know italian looking people behind the decks at circo loco is that a tour manager i don't know so it continues here um and not only that but they're asking you for the out of work broke skin general public to put your hand in your pocket to help cover those costs so they don't have to am i losing my mind here or did i just watch what actually happened i'm actually truly lost for words shocked and a little sad that's that's for me too because i think you would expect this from like martin garrix right that kind of crew of people but you know they probably might they might be mint you'd expect that from that kind of level of dj right um would you expect it from a Tiesto? Maybe even Tiesto. No, Tiesto's not that dumb. He wouldn't do that, right? He's got too many people around him. He would like, be like, what are you doing? But you'd expect it from that kind of level of people. But from Seth and that, Martinez brothers? <sighs> um, some of these uh, were heroes to me, but now any respect I had is lost for sure. And if you're one of the tour managers who work for the DJs of video, I feel deeply sorry for you too. You're at the side wiping their asses every second of every day while on tour. And now they won't repay the favor by helping you with a few chunks of change for their vast wealth. Exactly. It's as scandalous as Victoria Beckham trying to furlough Hula staff so that the taxpayer could cover their cost. Luckily though, a, she saw sense and reversed the request when public outrage uh, subtly reminded her she's a fucking millionaire and a hundred times over. So you can cover those costs out of coins in her solid gold bag. This lockdown brings out the good uh, but the horrors and others if you're going to donate to anything donate to nhs or your own country's frontline medical services now again i think that's a little bit virtue signally right you, if you want to donate to the nhs do it but you know if somebody that you like and support their work if they want if they're asking you to support them in this testing time so that they can continue making that work after these times are over and you want to do it more than welcome to do it i just think the level of for it to come from the millionaire DJ's end to employ those people is just lacking in any. It's like I don't know. It's like Richard Branson doing a, uh, a you know, a video, a GoFundMe for his staff or some shit. It's just it just makes no sense, and it it's always gonna it's not gonna sit well with people, um, especially considering you know most people would agree that most DJs are exorbitantly overpaid, especially when you hit the kind of top five percent. It is what it is. We're not debating whether or not you should get money or not, but let's just say let's all agree we know most of them are overpaid for what they do, right? Especially if you're in the scene, especially if you're in a met popping metropolitan city with a good local dance community, electronic music scene, you would know that there's many people within your scene who are far superior than some of these people in terms of DJing, in terms of ability to read a crowd, in terms of, you know, how to just rock a place, whatever it may be, but they're not at that level. It's just what it is, and you can't really be saying it's fair or not. But you know, DJing isn't like fucking playing a guitar, right? If if you have the musical acumen and you're able to commit some time to it, you can make some really exponential leaps in your development as an artist over a short period of time because most people are just phoning in most people are just going on charts looking at what everyone else is playing and then playing that that's what most people do but if you actually want to be a dj you can get really good in a really short space of time it's not that deep of a skill so for those people who make really high amounts of money in a, in a skill that most people can do if you've got any kind of time and ability to listen to music and have good taste it just it beggars belief in it it beggars belief really um anyway it continues here um Carl Cox and Ellen Fitzpatrick and Seth Chocolate took time to clear up the air of social media archive. Many of their responses aimed to distance themselves and the involvement of the efforts. So that's the thing. They didn't, because I think there is something, because even though he kind of ribbed Victoria Beckham about what she did, you know, trying to further her staff, um, there is something quite admirable. I think Tottenham Hotspur did the same thing too, right? They got a lot of backlash based on their decision to furlough their whole staff or to sack people. I don't know what it was, but essentially they reversed the decision. Um, there is something honourable about under knowing that, hey, even though it's you know you shouldn't be shamed into doing anything, I think there is something quite admirable about being an adult about it and being like, hey, I judged it wrong and I've now noticed how bad what I did was and I'm going to reverse tact or I wasn't aware of the other parts, facts of the matter and I'm going to do something different now based on the information I've got. It's okay to change your mind. No one's saying you shouldn't change your mind. 
but to suddenly try and distance yourself from this issue because how else could you interpret that post how do you interpret that video that i played how do you interpret a video of these icons in the electronic music scene right so filming yourself a video telling you to donate and buy these mixes of these from these random pages or on Bandcamp because it's going to go to supporting their tour managers so <laughs> many of their responses aimed at distance of an involvement with the efforts however on the whole they sought to make it clear that their managers were taken care of during difficult so why are they asking for money then if they're taken care of and it continues here Carl Cox what did he say wow it looks like some social and he's not even him taking a picture it's his mate who's his mate is that the tour manager just taking a picture with him he's such a wally you know? he is such a donut what do you say? Wow, it looks like social media. Crazy train has gone on overdrive once again. Um, I've never seen anything blown up so out of proportion without context. A group of the hardest working tour managers out there wanted to get creative and have some fun by getting together and seeing who could actually DJ. What? They asked me to support them as I support other touring our DJs this week. Huh? After a week throughout the year, all of us did, all of us did that without too much thought or hesitation through our social media channels and gave them a mix for one of our shows there was no suggestion ever made that there was a cover wages that is simply ridiculous and i feel sad and that this has been suggested we look after our family through thick and thin just as it should be i've been working with my tour manager ian for 20 years and we've been the best of friends ever long. We've literally seen and done it all. Ian is one of the best. Well, Ian, of course, being looked after throughout this crazy situation, along with the rest of my time in college. I'm sh- college colleagues, sorry. I'm sure the tour managers involved in the TNT sessions could agree that, in hindsight, the video they put out could have been presented and worded better. But who put out the video? Who made? Who said those words on the video? Though this is insane. The level of spin. What? In a better way, but these things happen. People make mistakes. To rip it apart in a way has been done. So many out lies. Not cool. No, I don't see any reason to raise more negativity in such a present critical time. Speculating over something that wasn't done and supporting the love. Let's get back to music, folks. Love, Carl Cox. Fuck you, you absolute wanker. Oh God, he's a disgusting human, isn't he? They ask for, they ask fans for money, and then now they're saying that they didn't ask fans for money. Like this whole explanation is insane. So what? A group of our tour managers are out there wanted to get creative. Okay, cool. And they have some fun by getting together and seeing who could actually DJ. So if that's the fact, there should have just been a live stream of tour managers with pictures, fucking lifestyle images of the people they manage behind them spinning on Twitch or on YouTube live stream. That's what it would have been, right? And then someone votes and says, oh, I like him or I like her. That's what it should have been. But it wasn't that. It was videos of them telling people to go and buy mixes on Bandcamp because it's going to support them behind the scenes that's what Seth Chocolate said didn't it are people behind the scenes that make it happen it's like what they asked me to support them and as they support us Tori did so we went out so what so, uh, so all us did with that intention there was no suggestion da, 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 da. so they sent them mixing that make yeah. anyway he's talking about his ass so I'm not going to waste any more mental gymnastics on that and if it's Patrick said what please read what do you say in here Please read, yeah? All right, cool. I'm reading, bruv. What's that? As Patrick said, let's get this to load up. Honestly, man. If anything, again, this should just be an illustration. Same way how, you know, okay, it's been deleted. Cool. Well, we know he didn't say nothing. It's the same way how, you know, this whole, like, uh, holy didn't doubt RA people who haven't said a word about the issue, kept completely stum, not said anything. You have to kind of look at it and be like, okay, so what's, what is Save Our Scene? Is Save Our Scene watching Peggy Goo DJ somewhere on top of a hotel or top of an amazing apartment somewhere in South Korea or is Save Our Scene actually supporting people that put on raves next to where you live and actually give a shit about your local community they bring up they bring up support the artists that mean a lot to you they are you know providing a safe space for people who can't necessarily go out in other places in the world what is actually saving the scene what is it because if the scene is this i want nothing to do with it if this is the scene if this is what it is i want nothing to if it's fucking paragraphs of carl cox trying to explain to me why it makes sense for his tour managers to be posting videos of him asking people to buy mixes online with unlicensed music for us so we can support his tour manager if that's what the scene is i don't want any parts of it but if the scene is supporting people from the local scene who are actually doing something actually making meaningful changes fair enough but if it's all this nonsense count me out of it and he continues here Seth 
Seth Chuckster kind of his Seth Chuckster statement. I have to say something as this needs to be said. This these this is people helping each other. Personally, my tour manager is taking care of. So why are you in it then? Why do you keep saying personally as if like you're not involved? Your face is there and you're talking about it. Hey guys, this unprecedented time. Like, what a nonce. Um, TM is taken care of and not ta- and not part of this group. But I gave them a mix and helped out because that's what you do when someone asks you for favor during a pandemic. So if I DM Steph Nine and ask him for a tenner, he'd give it to me because I'm asking for a favor. All right, mate. Cool. Um, that what uh, and that what all the DJ in that video did. No one can talk about someone's else situation if they don't know it. <sighs> I hate all these people. So instead of being a bunch of moaning critics, moaning critics. Imagine Steph Truxler, the hubris on this guy. He's one of the biggest moaners online. He's always crying about something, right? Whether it's tech house DJs making a living, right? Whether it's Nina Kravitz getting half naked. Whether it's if something's going on a scene, whether it's ragging on Steve Aoki. Again, if Steve Aoki did this, what would Seth Chokser would have said if Steve Aoki did this? He hates Steve Aoki. Steve Aoki does nothing wrong. He hits people in the face with cakes and gets a couple of lawsuits here and there. He makes terrible music, but whatever. He seems like a chill dude. He occupies his own space. He doesn't bother anybody. If Steve Aoki did this, what would Seth Chokser say? And he continues, no one can talk about something. So it said, fucking relax about a few guys selling 10 mixes for five bucks to make some extra cash. Yeah, because 10 mixes for five bucks is definitely going to help them out in the long run, isn't it? Right? Yeah, for sure. Because when one person buys it, they're not just going to rip it and upload it online. Yeah, cool. Five bucks is definitely going to be a game changer for their lives. Like, what are you talking about, man? Why can't you give them the five bucks? Why can't you just say, hey, take a down that post? I didn't really see what you were doing there and let me just send you the money. Why can't you just do that? And just say, hey guys, it don't just be on the scene. I didn't know what the video was gonna do. Pans up, I got that one wrong. Why are you why are you trying to rationalize this and trying to make it seem as if we're the dumb dums? Like who cares? It continues here. Wanna be outraged? Look at the world right now. Oh, I love that. I love that what a bit what about is a minute. I love that. I love the moving of the GoPros. I love when people do that, right? When you point out something they're doing wrong and then they're like, oh, I don't know why you're getting so hot and bothered. Look at what I'm happening in the world. It's like, go and jump off a hill somewhere, you absolute tosser. And it continues here. Want to be outraged? Look at the world right now. And this is morally outrageous. Have a word of yourself, people. <sighs> this should be, again, no judgment, I guess. Well, I've made loads of judgments, but I think as... um. As this guy said, John Esco in his post uh, at the bottom here, uh, the lockdown brings out the good in some, but the horrors in others, right? And I think, if anything, all these things happening, I think we should be, this is a time you have a legit reason to be angry. Because online, I don't, I'm not really a fan of people being outraged and throwing a fit and shit. But if you want to be outraged about things and about how your government has kind of dealt with the whole pandemic and, you know, the lack of leading voices in science, the fact that science has been politicized, the lack of government funding, the lack of support, the lack of PPE, uh, you know, the misinformation, uh, the where we are in the world now because of the, you know, fervent pursuit for globalization this idea that we're going to be this whole global citizens and we're going to you know a world without borders has put us in a position where essentially one virus emanates from one place and this decimates the entire world's economy all these things that you've been led to believe that should be good for us have been turned out to be wrong and these people that you hold up in high regard who are meant to be leading the way have proved to be inadequate or to be uh you know to not be fit for purpose right they don't know what they're doing they haven't got a clue this should be a time for you to log in your head the people that have done the right thing during this time and prior and you've reacted the right way and the people that have reacted the wrong way so that when everything goes back to normal you remember those names and instead of harassing them online and you know uh being noisy vote with your feet vote with your wallet and just don't support them so vote with your feet means vote them out of power vote with your wallet don't support them and completely ignore their existence so that those people can kind of get phased out and we can be left with people in the scene who actually give a shit right who are actually one of us who don't you know who aren't that detached from reality right who have some sort of self-awareness who are able to give back in an actual real way that's not um, some performance online right that's what we should be doing just remember everyone that did wrong and remember everyone that did right so that when things reopen we can support the people who are actually doing things the right way because i think this is the problem as much t- as much as this is 
as, as, as annoying as this is, I've wasted the best part of 20 plus minutes talking about people doing things the wrong way in the scene where I should be using my platform to promote people that are doing the right thing. But I'm hoping going forward, we put more light on the people actually who actually give a shit about the scene, not people like this, because this is just this. It's not even again. That's what he said, right? It's just saddening, isn't it? Because it's not. It's something that you could easily avoid if you had some level of self awareness, but they don't. And then you're trying to lecture us as like as if we're the ones overreacting. That is insane. That's insane. But hey, what can you do?